Our standard with the uh, TCNA guidelines and ANSI is eighth of an inch in 10 feet. So we could take a box edge, a 10 foot box edge and just slide around the floor, but that's only gonna tell me, kind of find the high spots and the low spots, but not the overall. Also, how do we figure out how much material we're gonna to need to build up to make this floor flat? Because it's got a big tile on it, a 12 by 24. So we need it to be flat. One of the best ways is to do a flowable hydraulic cementitious underlayment, the new term for it. And that will allow us to only go, some allow you to go down to about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch above the high point. So then we need to figure out how much material are we going to use in a room like this. So let's do some math. So this area here, as you can see, I've got my laser shooting around the room. So what I do is I take my tape measure and I shoot around and I find my height. So here I'm running at about 23 and a quarter. And I keep measuring around and I keep measuring until I find, as I've got marked right here on my floor, the high point. So the high point is your lowest number. So I'm about 23 and three quarters here. So as I've measured around here, this runs 23 and three quarters here, back in the same area over here, 23 and seven eighths back here by the door, or 22 and 7 eighths I mean, and here, same thing, about 22, 15, 16. But then as we keep working our way back into the room, we're at 23, the other side was 23 and a quarter. We come back into this area, and same thing, we're at 23. Measure over here, and now we're starting to make some gains, 23 and an eight. Here we're 23 and a half, wow. So as we keep measuring around, 23 and 3 eighths, that's kind of the average. So now let's do some math. This floor is about 200 square feet. So let's do some quick math here. Got 200 square feet. And half of the room, the front half is about a half inch thick. I need to have my uh, flowable hydraulic cementitious underlayment be about a half inch thick on average at the front half of the room. At the back half of the room, it's more like three quarters, maybe even three quarters strong. So that tells us overall the average is gonna be about five eighths of an inch thick. So then if you take your, whatever product is of your choice, of your underlayment, many times they have a calculator. And so if you take their calculator and you punch in your numbers, how many square feet, what the average depth is, it'll give you a reading. So mine comes out to, on both, apps that I checked are about 22 bags is how much material I'm going to need for this plus primer and so I'll need that for this floor to level this floor out. I'm not going to take a chance. I'm not going to roll the dice that I have exactly 22 bags. What if I'm a little short? I'm going to round up. I'm going to go up to 25 bags, maybe even 26 bags to make sure I have enough. And I'll also go through and I'll set some pins on the floor, uh, some little uh, peel and stick tabs so I can, when I start pouring this, that I pour it to the height that needs to be. Just work your heights, find your highest spot, and wherever you found your highest spot, kind of measure around there to make sure you found the exact highest spot. Then check your underlayment. What product are you using? What's the thinnest they allow that product to be installed at? Some are eight, some are 16, some say feather edge. I would always figure wherever my high spot is, I want to make sure I go over that even a little bit more. So I would always figure an eighth of an inch above my high spot. So that in case I miss the spot somewhere that I didn't get the exact highest of the high spots, I still have enough that I go up to just about zero on those areas. So that's one way you can go through, check your floor, do the calculation to make sure that you've got the right amount of material, you order the right amount. And then when you're ordering your uh, underlayment, make sure you get the primer because those are uh, always required in most instances on floors. Um, so make sure you use the product, read the directions, follow mixing directions, all those things, speed, how much time, temperature, exact amount of water, all those things you need to follow those directions very specifically so that you'll have a really good job when you're finished. Thanks.